Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Caleb and today we have a new type of video where I asked you guys a question and we're going to talk about some of your responses and see what we can do to to help the challenges new developers face. Now you might be in a standard software engineering role or you might just be learning to code or you might be in some kind of part-time development role where you're doing some development on the side. Whatever your situation, this video should be applicable to you. So we're just gonna jump in and talk about what you guys have to say. But first you need to check out our sponsor, Mailer Lite. <sighs> I wish I had an email marketing tool that was ideal for small businesses like mine. You know, one that had all the capabilities of a big email tool, but without all that unnecessary noise. Hello. Ah, who are you? I have the tool for you, Mailer Lite where anyone can make easy drag and drop newsletters or choose from a variety of templates. How did you get into my house? MailerLite's drag and drop editor has pre-designed blocks for social media, embedded surveys, and video. MailerLite is the tool for you if you want to do anything with segmentation, automation, and more. How did he know? Plus, there's 24-7 customer support with real people. No way, 24-7 customer support with real people? Best of all, it's free! Free! I'll sign up right now! Wait, so who are you again? Oh, I'm, I'm you from the future. No way, really? So, I'm still doing YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah, you're still doing YouTube. Do I have millions of subscribers? No. Oh. Be sure to check out MailerLite if you're interested in email marketing or hoping to start a newsletter. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Go get started for free. So I asked, what are your biggest challenges as a new software developer? Whether you are one right now or at some point, what were your challenges? And I'd appreciate it guys if you give me some other question ideas in the comments section below so I can do some more videos like this, assuming it goes well. <laughs> this person says GitHub, SSH, and anything to do with servers, handling data in JavaScript, handling complex click events, hard to know how to control and output data to HTML and do anything dynamic when it comes to handling data and appending it to HTML. And a bunch of other things in that comment as well. <laughs> so that person's struggling with quite a lot here. This person says they don't have enough knowledge of the market and how to adapt to industry standards. Here, this person's struggling with the architecture of an application, how an application should be laid out. Sometimes it becomes hard to see the bigger picture. Great videos, Caleb. Satisfying the customer requirements, even when we develop according to the business requirements, the customer is not satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> so this person's saying they're developing software, but the customer is still not satisfied even when they follow the requirements. This person here is saying that they're struggling with implementing standards every time they start coding. So basically, they start to think twice about everything they're doing and asking if this would pass the standards, whatever the standards mean in this situation. Maybe the more I code, the more I will get used to it. Well, this is interesting because I'm not entirely sure what they mean by standards, if that means coding standards of their own or if it means conventions that have been defined in the developer community or if they mean standards for their company it's kind of hard to say but i kind of get what they're saying basically they don't know if the code they're developing is up to par to pass some standards and this person says i can't start i'm binge watching friends well that is a, a problem i don't think that has anything to do with coding i think it's just the fact that you're not motivated because you're binge watching some TV show, so. I'm not sure I can help you with that one. Here we have someone saying that it's challenging to get over that intermediate hump where learning progression slows significantly, thus diminishing enthusiasm. So how do we power through that? We have a lot of good challenges and honestly I've faced like 90% of these, except the friends one. <laughs> okay, I mean, maybe maybe not with friends, but I've, I've had my share of wasting time, so. This person says they don't know how to program or code and he can't find any resources online to teach him because all they do is teach code and syntax. So, not entirely sure of the problem there. Uh, personally, I believe there is an unlimited resources online for learning how to code, and I'll share you guys some of those at the end of this video, but let's just go through some more of these comments. This person here says they struggle with consistency. I've been there. As you guys know, I'm terrible with uploading videos consistently, but I've been doing better, so give me some cred. 
This person says they struggle learning to work in a team. Individually, you can be great, but harnessing the power of a unified team is unparalleled. Well, at least you understand the value of teamwork. Now you just gotta figure out how to do it. Here is a comment from a technical recruiter sharing how many of the new developers struggle with getting their first job. So maybe once you get your first job, getting the second and third becomes significantly easier. What is, what is it with this crazy requirements to get your first job? Why does everyone struggle with the first one? So I don't think this is the only person struggling with their first job. I also did a poll asking people what they thought was the most challenging part about being a software developer. And the most common response by far was knowing enough to qualify for job positions. Now it doesn't specify the first job position, but there's basically an overwhelming agreement that qualifying for tech positions is very challenging. Whether that's your first, second, or third, or your 20th, <laughs> the, the job requirements are usually very high. And maybe that is why it's such a high paying field. And maybe that's why there are so many still open positions for software developers, just because people are not meeting the requirements. But what I believe is that a lot of these requirements are more like recommendations or suggestions. I would argue that usually they put the ideal candidate, and in reality there is no such thing as an ideal candidate. They put their description in these job applications, and this is what people think are requirements. So you find a beginner level software development role, required five years of experience, and you're like, well, what do I do? I'm doomed, I'm just gonna go back working at McDonald's or whatever, not that there's any problem with working at McDonald's, but the point is, people basically give up too easily because these requirements are unrealistic. And that's to be expected. Honestly, you can go to any job application and more than likely you're not going to meet every single requirement. Now, I believe they put unrealistic expectations on these job descriptions for two reasons. One, it's just to weed out the people that are not willing to learn the material to get the job. And two, it's to, uh, what was the second one? Oh yeah, to basically reduce the total number of applicants to hopefully get more candidates that are more skilled, obviously. This job application concept ties very closely to the person complaining about industry standards and how to keep up with everything. The easiest way to do this is to look at the job applications that are out there in the market. You can go on Indeed or any other job site, Stack Overflow, look at five jobs and within 10 minutes you'll have 20 things that you could study to be up to date in the industry. Now the question is how do you go and learn those things? That might be a question for a different day. I did just do a video how to learn code in 2019. Maybe that's a video you'd be interested in. But as for actually knowing what to learn, it's actually fairly easy. All you have to do is go look at some job descriptions on the internet. Regarding the question to work in a team, hmm, well, this is challenging because I am generally a person that prefers to do things fairly independently, but there are definitely situations when I've had to work in a team, whether it was at school or at work or in different scenarios. And one recommendation I have for that is one, go to a coding meetup because often these meetups are going to be a situation where you can start working on connecting with other individuals, learning how to interact with other individuals, and oftentimes you'll do things like pair programming for projects. When I went to my first technical meetup, I was paired with another individual and started coding a project the same day. <laughs> I almost didn't even go and it was a huge experience. I'm really glad that I got to go and that I did. In addition to meetups, you could also try hackathons, which is basically when you get together, force yourself to stay up all night or something like that, and you develop some project with a team environment. So this is a great way to basically acquaint yourself with other people. Highly recommend it if you enjoy torturing yourself by doing all-nighters or by putting a lot of stress on you to finish a product in a short amount of time. So if you're into that kind of thing, check out hackathons. That might be a good solution for your problem. This person went above and beyond by actually responding to my question with a blog post. So check out his website, digitalblake.com. He talks about what his biggest challenges as a new software developer were. And going through this article, there's two main things he talks about. One, procrastinating with tooling. So tooling is just an example. There's always something we procrastinate with that is valuable, but not necessarily of the most value. For me, I often spend time organizing things into categories and structuring the way I'm going to learn stuff without actually going and typing out the code. I spend more time studying what I'm going to be learning than what I'm actually learning. What he means by tooling is basically the development environment, the setup, the deployment with continuous integration possibly, basically everything around software development, but not actually the code that makes the software. 
Also with tooling is basically shortcuts to basically skip development. So a lot of development tools such as IDEs will have tooling that allows you to generate code or generate some kind of application without having to do the code. And this is another way of basically skipping the learning process to make your life easier. And sometimes that is totally fine. I am not against tooling. I think it's essential. I think it's vital. I think it's super important. <laughs> but you don't want that to be a sole replacement to understanding the code. If you don't understand the code and you're trying to be a software developer, then you're probably going to be limiting yourself. Now, if you're doing this for a business purpose and you're trying to get an application running and going, then maybe doing some automated tooling is just going to be just what you need. But in this situation, this guy is clearly trying to be a developer and he's putting off learning to code by focusing too much on the tooling. The second thing he mentioned here is that he struggles staying motivated learning new technologies. It goes through the example that he spent a lot of time learning Angular 1. Angular 1 kind of went out the window and was replaced with Angular 2 and all these other ones that are much different than Angular 1. So was that time wasted? It very well could be that a lot of that time was wasted. And my recommendation for this and what I try to do is I try to focus on the fundamental stuff. So the basis for Angular is JavaScript. If he spent just as much time in JavaScript as he did in Angular, more than likely those skills would transfer to Angular 2 and any other JavaScript framework such as React or Vue or whatever the sexy framework of the day is. He does talk in here about how you have to be smart about understanding when something's important to know versus when something's just a fad. And one of the ways you can do this is to give it time. I know it's awesome to study the, the bleeding edge, the cutting edge, but oftentimes, if you realistically look at what you're going to be studying, what you're going to be using in the industry, it's the stuff that's tried and true, that's been out for three plus years and has a large community of people using it. So when you're picking a technology or wondering what to study, try to focus on the stuff that's been around for a while, that's well established, but is not outdated, people are still using it and it's going to give you that fundamental knowledge, such as JavaScript or any other programming language versus focusing that time on a particular framework or technology or tooling. I thought I'd also share a survey from another YouTuber, Real Tough Candy. She asked a very similar question. I may or may not have stole this idea from, from her stuff. So uh, anyways, the, the survey comes up with the, basically the same results as what my survey gave. So in my survey, people said that they struggle getting the knowledge to meet the job requirements. And in this survey, the most frustrating thing about your first development job, the, the most answered question is the learning curve. So very similar results. She has a lot of great content, so go check her stuff out. And I'll, I'll try to put a link in the description if I can remember. <laughs> Probably will forget. Obviously, I'm just trying to keep this video very discussion-based. I don't think there's a magical answer to all of these problems. I certainly don't know it all. I'm no expert. I'm just a newbie like you. <laughs> Probably always will be, and that's fine. As long as we keep learning, that's what really matters because we're never going to become an expert in everything, and you shouldn't expect to. So here are my concluding tips. I have five of them. Number one is to focus on core technology. I talked about this with the Angular versus JavaScript thing. The more time you focus on stuff that's going to last, the better off you are in the long term. So focus on the principles behind technologies, the fundamental knowledge that's going to last. So not only does this mean focusing a lot of time on JavaScript instead of focusing it all on Angular, but also going a layer more studying stuff like algorithms, data structures, and more conceptual computer science content that's going to basically improve your overall well-being as a software developer. Number two is to do what excites you. I feel like a lot of people jump into studying these technologies because they feel that they have to. It's the, it's the thing to do as a software developer. And the result is they don't end up learning the material because it's boring to them. Instead, figure out something you want to do and learn the technologies that are required to get that done. So if you want to build an iOS app, learn Swift or learn React Native. Whatever it might be, you have an outcome that you're reaching for and that learning process is going to go a lot smoother. That boring stuff that you gotta study anyways, that'll come with time because you'll start to realize that if you learn it, it's going to help you with your end goal ultimately. So it helps a lot with long-term learning. Number three is to consider starting a blog. It's a great way to set yourself apart from the rest of the world. And that's exactly what Digital Blake is doing. So follow his footsteps, follow what I'm doing here, creating videos, do something to 
show your knowledge and share with the world. Number four is another great way to share your knowledge and that is more for getting a job. That is to create a portfolio. Now I have a really good portfolio example by this guy named Austin. It goes and shows all of his skills, his projects, and it just has some cool stats that makes the website very interactive and fun to look at. Anybody can go look at this website and realize that Austin is very serious about what he's doing. He's eager, he's motivated, he's organized. Very, very good way to basically set yourself apart from the rest of the population. Now, if you're looking to start a website, I'll recommend Bluehost. I'll leave a link for them in the description. And with a website, you're definitely going to need a newsletter to get people to come to your website. So for that, you can check out MailerLite, the sponsor of this video. Link for that in the description as well. Now, my fifth tip is all about getting your first job. It seems like a lot of people find the learning curve to be harsh. And I agree. I've applied for software development jobs. I've gotten software development jobs and it's harsh. I'm not going to lie. It's very, very challenging. And there's books I've studied. There's times I've spent eight hours a day just prepping for these interviews. Now, when it comes to your first job specifically, have lower expectations. Do not feel like you have to be the senior developer at Google to be successful. My first software development job was someone who lived fairly locally who said, hey, we need a website built and we have this app idea we might want to build in the future. You free to do some work? And I wasn't even looking for a job, but I said yes. Although this wasn't like the perfect dream job, it got me in the door. It had me focusing on technology numerous hours throughout the day. It helped build my skills and it got on my resume so then I could go get a better job in the future. So if you're even struggling to get that basic first job, then you're probably not doing the step three and four, which is to build a portfolio and to start a blog or basically somehow set yourself apart from the rest of the population. Do that and the job will follow. But if you're still really struggling, then lower your standards more and go volunteer at a local nonprofit. Nothing's wrong with that. It's a great way to get some experience and they are more likely to let you tinker with their software than jumping into a, a company with no experience. They're not going to want to have the liability of teaching you everything. So get in somewhere that's going to give you the skills that'll allow you to get a better job. So those are my five tips, but please leave your tips in the comment section below. There are a lot of challenges people face when it comes to development, and this is definitely an interesting topic. So let me know your challenges and also what other content or topics you'd like me to discuss and do this interactive style video. Leave your comments below and let's start some conversations. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe because how else am I gonna take over the internet without your help? So let's take over the internet together and with that, I'll see you in the next video. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Who are you? <laughs> ah! Who are you? <laughs> wow! <laughs> it's fine.